So, as I always talk about, the quality of your meats and proteins really matter. And I'm going to share something from this book that we need to talk about more. Is So, there's a lot of confusion when it comes to pasture-raised and grass-fed and this and that. So, pasture-raised is from uh, omnivorous animals. So, like pigs and birds and that kind of stuff. And what else? Pigs, boar, and most species of birds, right? So, they're raised on pasture and they're allowed to roam freely ideally but sometimes the, the diet of these animals are complemented with supplemented with other stuff um, and sometimes it's, yeah grains seeds soy table scraps or farm surplus so like fruits and vegetables left, left over uh, so the supplemental diet might or might not be either organic or non-gmo and that kind of stuff uh, and like I mentioned in the other video um, I've heard of people that with celiac, if they eat chicken that was fed gluten in some way through wheat or, or some other, even sometimes soy or something, they don't feel well, they, they still get an effect. I don't know if, I don't think it's more mostly placebo because sometimes you don't know if the, where the chicken's coming from. So I don't know, I don't know. I'm just throwing that out there. Um, but the idea that, so when it's grass fed and grass fed, finished they're typically not given uh, hormones and antibiotics and all that because it's coming from a farm that cares about that and, and they market their meats with those benefits so they're not doing those practices that we know is not healthy for us for the animal or for us um, and she talks about how the terms grass-fed and pasture-raised are often used interchangeably but they're not the same so like I said pasture-raised um, well, what she says is grass-fed implies pasture-raised, but not the other way around. So a cow, an animal can be considered pasture-raised, but it doesn't mean that they ate grass for their entire lives. And one thing that I really want to emphasize that I tell everyone is that just because a meat, let's say grass-fed beef, is grass-fed, doesn't mean that it was fed grass for the entire lifetime of that animal you need to make sure that it's grass finished because a lot of farmers what they do is the last period of their life a very short period of before they slaughter the animal they give them a ton of feed whether it's corn soy or something else to really fatten the animal up so get it to be more much more fat and big so that they actually have more product to sell right so there's a, a law or a regulation or whatever that if if they only do that for a short period at the end of the lifetime of the animal they don't have to say that on the label so they can say grass fed but you know what's funny you're paying more for grass fed but the last week or two or something of their lifetime they were giving a ton of corn ton of soy ton of wheat whatever i don't know um and that is not that's not healthy for you and it's not even fair because you're still paying more because it's grass-fed but that last week or two it kind of outweighs all the benefits of most of their lifetime being grass-fed so you really want to make sure that it's grass-fed and grass-finished um, let me see what else so because omnivores animals typically don't thrive without some supplemental feed pasture raised is as good as it gets so you want to look for grass-fed beef, bison, and lamb, but look for pasture-raised pork, chicken, and turkey, right? So you're not going to find like grass-fed and grass-finished chicken. Um, but um, pasture-raised is as good as it gets. And then you can ask, I always ask the farmers, so if I go to a farmer's market, I ask them what they eat for the entire lifetime. So they might give you like, Oh, they eat mostly like insects and this and that out in the dirt and grass or whatever. Um, but you want to make sure that it's throughout the entire lifetime. So make sure you ask. It's okay to ask. And the more that we ask, the more that they'll realize there's a demand for cleaner, healthier foods. All right. So that, that's a huge help. Um, Another point that I want to mention, she wrote here, which is really interesting, because pasture-raised animals hang out in the sun, their fat 
is a source of vitamin D which is practically not practically non-existent in factory farmed animals that's a huge reason why it's so beneficial to spend a little more on grass-fed grass-finished pasture-raised animals um, vitamin D nowadays so many of us work inside I'm blessed to do a lot of my work outside but a lot of people work inside a lot and so many people are deficient in vitamin D um, and the fact that we can get a little bit of vitamin D from the fat of an animal that was out in the Sun that's pretty fascinating that's pretty cool so you want to make sure that you do that um, let's see what else did I want to talk about much lower water content um, the fats are much healthier of course as we know like the grass-fed meat contains this is interesting grass-fed meat contains approximately four times more omega-3 fatty acids in the very useful DHA and EPA form as compared with grain-fed meat four times that's insane and then it contains fewer omega-6 so the ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 fatty acids in grass-fed meat is typically within the optimal range at 3 to 1 but can be as low as 4 to 1 and as high as 20 to 1 in grain fed meat uh, varying by the exact diet of the cow and also the cut of the meat but there's so much talk about omega-3s nowadays and we sometimes forget that grass-fed meats have some omega-3s and also even if they didn't have any just the fact that it has less omega-6 that's a huge benefit the amount of omega-6 in conventionally raised meat it's it's very unhealthy it's very it will put you out of balance um, now that's how I always talk about having more seafood if you can't afford grass-fed meats but I really hope this helps I just wanted to share those things um, so that we can keep that in mind on the paleo AIP and that's why I emphasize quality as much so when it comes to budget like if you can buy this is what I do every two weeks when they put out the coupon on uh, US wellness meats I buy a lot of meat and then I just put it in the freezer they comes to you frozen it reaches your house they ship it overnight you get it frozen it's still frozen you just put it in the freezer and take out whatever you need the more you buy sometimes the more discounts you get either there or even a farmers market so if it's too much for you to buy a big amount of food find friends find people in your community find even through Facebook groups you can see who's in your community and you can buy in bulk and just divide it up that way if you can't spend like 300 400 bucks at once on a huge order split it up with someone uh, but that will last you longer and you're eating really really good quality meats so I don't want to make this video too long I really hope that helped uh, but please keep that in mind I hope something in here helped if it did please give it a thumbs up so much more coming so much more coming stay tuned stay tuned for more subscribe have an amazing day